Can't see myself though. Estoy arriba. Jared, I think I have finally joined you in picture. <clears throat> Welcome, Joe. There you go. You didn't think I was here, did you? Well, let's let some more people come in. We're, they're starting to come in now. And we'll, at six o'clock, we'll we'll kick this off and get started. I appreciate everyone that's joining us right now. There is going to be the ability to do a chat. Um, for Q and A, if you would like, and we'll start with uh, August Martin from the Canaries, then uh, Jose Mendez, Captain Joe Kapinski, and then we will have um, uh, Shelter Bay's uh, Russ Dojan, who's going to be talking about what he's doing to get boats in in there. And I need to take a chance to thank our sponsor. And um, our sponsor, Nauticad, who's, who's helping us make all this possible with no charge to anyone. Um, this is Seven Seas Cruising Association. We are featuring our cruising host program hosts from the Caribbean Atlantic, uh, Canary Islands, Antigua, Puerto Rico, and Panama. I'm Joan Conover, your host, and this is part of our program to provide support to cruisers. WWSSCA.org, we're here 24 seven. What I'm showing you is the portal website you go into at WWSSCA.org. The reason I'm showing this to you is because right there where those orange buttons are, you will see something that says Seven Seas University, and you'll click on that and that will get you to the free videos that we've done uh, in the past. We did Jesse James and the others. This time we're doing the Ant Canary Islands with August Martin. We're doing Antigua right. with Captain Joe Kapinski. We're doing Puerto Rico, with Jose Mendez, and Panama with Russ Gojan. Canary Islands, welcome to August Martin, Antigua, Joe Kapinski. Yes. Puerto Rico, Jose, and Panama, uh, Russ. And I'm going to turn this over to you, Augustine, to talk on the Canary Islands, what's going on there, and share with us your stories. Of course. Good night. Uh, or good evening, everybody. Good night here in Los Palmas. Uh, we've been having or been suffering, like everybody, this uh, COVID-19 virus. At the very first, in March and April, we were slightly touched, not too much, but from August onwards, we've been having a big rate in infections. Uh, the good news on the night and yesterday was that the curve of infection is coming down back again. So we are having a total of 6,000 active infected people already in the Canaries at the moment. We had 6,300 something yesterday, so curve is turning down. So we hope that will be the way it comes down from now onwards. At the moment, we have no restrictions in coming in from the European countries. Uh, there's a list of uh, uh, countries where, apart from the UE, that we can uh, 
uh, that where you come from, but the uh, the most important thing is um, you, uh, to to come to the Canaries without any restrictions. You should come from the UE, not touching Morocco, because at the moment Morocco has closed their borders. So if you stop coming from the mainland, Spain, to Casablanca or Agadir, then you might have problems at the entrance of the Canaries. But if you come through the Azores or uh, Madeira, there wouldn't be any problem. Uh, I have a message today from a uh, North American uh, guy he came from uh, Georgia. Then he sailed from Georgia to the Azores, and he just right. Um, he just arrived in Tenerife with no problems at all. So, nice thing if you're coming from the U.S. or from Europe is to come straight forward to the Canaries or touching Azores or Madeira. That would be the nice thing. Uh, now, um, I'm going to show you uh, the, uh, my contact link where you can, um, where you can uh, get any, uh, any information from me from Gran Canaria or for the Canaries. If you're seeing now my name, my email, my mobile, I have WhatsApp, so if you've got internet, no problem, you send me the WhatsApp. And I live in Puerto, uh, Puerto, uh, Pasito Blanco's Marina, that's in the very south of Gran Canaria. That's no problem for me to reach you on the main uh, landing in the uh, harbor of Marina, it's Marina Las Palmas, Marina. So I'm going to show you the link well, first of all, I'm going to show you the, the EU country and the other countries where you can come from with no problem. That's Australia, Canada, Georgia, but this means uh, Russia, Japan, Morocco. I told you already the problem. They have already blocked their borders, so we, uh, we will have problems touching Morocco and then come to the Canary. New Zealand. Rwanda, South Korea, Thailand, Tunisia, Uruguay, and China. All these countries, apart from the UE, you have no problem to arrive from them to the Canaries. Um, if you come to the Canaries, the, uh, the advice that we have on our marina, which is not the main one, is that you land on the main marina in Las Palmas. This is the link to that marina, marina.palmasport.es. This is where the ark departs every year. So it's uh, no confusion with that marina. Um, also, uh, we have uh, uh, here. You need to share your yes. link. You need Pardon? to share your screen. Oh, sorry. Um, let me see. Uh, can you see now? This is Marina Las Palmas. And when you, you can ask for a dock uh, online here, where it says Solicitud de Atraque, there, then it comes a, a form that you can fill online and send it to the marina. At the very end, you just click and you send it to the marina, okay? Here, where it says NDR, you click it to the marina. This is the main entrance to Gran Canaria. You can also go to Lanzarote, but always trying to go to the main harbor. In Lanzarote would be Arrecife, 
and you are advised to solve all the paperwork with customs and with the health authorities before you sail the other island. Also, I can show you where I live, where my marina is. It's Pasito Blanco in the south of the island of Gran Canaria. This is the marina. You have a uh, jet club where you can have your meals, whatever. And also you've got place where to anchor just at the very entrance of the marina. Um, I can't say, well, you know, now it's no problem at all. Uh, I don't know if the art is going to depart this year for law from Gran Canaria. The last news they had was that the inscription for the R was finishing on the 20th of August, but depending how this <coughs> pandemic um, rises or goes backwards, we may have no problem of receiving all more than 300 votes to depart from here just for the R. There are other rallies also apart from the R. The problem will be maybe in the, on the other side of the Atlantic where they have to land at the crossing. But by now, no problem to come to Gran Canaria or any of the Canaries from any of the EU marinas or harbors. And uh, I don't know if there's any other kind of information you would like to know. Agus, thank you so much for this. And uh, we're going to switch over now. I'm going to drop your screen share. Okay. And we'll switch over to um, um, Antigua's Captain Joe Kapinski. Right, right. here. Hello. Uh, let me say the flag behind me is the Antiguan flag. And I didn't realize until I checked my camera, it gives me kind of a godlike halo, which I'm beginning to enjoy. But that's what's going on there behind me. A um, little bit of history. Um, Antigua, like a lot of Caribbean islands, went into a total uh, shutdown midnight, uh, March 26. They did that without any warning. Uh, I heard about it through an American Airlines pilot I know who got wind of it and put a notice up that Air American was going to stop flying there on after the 26th. Uh, they went to a very hard uh, quarant uh, quarantine, no ship, no boats could come in unless they were pre-approved. No aircraft could come in until they were pre-approved. Uh, there was a curfew that only allowed people to go out in the morning for the purpose of shopping. Anything else you had to do, uh, you could do, like go to a doctor, uh, take care of family events, but you would be stopped, and people were stopped. They're, Antigua's taking this very seriously. Um, they reopened with a phase reopening starting June 2nd, first by expanding uh, the hours that you could move around, first only in the daytime, then into the night. Antigua is still under a state of emergency, which goes until October 29th. Right now, uh, all businesses are open with uh, the proviso that they have to abide by uh, certain social distancing requirements. The government has gone in and told restaurants, bars, what they can do. They have uh, brought in street vendors. There are a lot of people that sell food on the streets, sell food in front of schools. Schools have now started going back in with the phase reopening. Um, giving all of those people uh, bus drivers, cab drivers, instructions on what is expected of them uh, to maintain uh, a sterile environment to the best they can. Uh, right now, Antigua has not been tested on this system very much because we're still in the low season. Uh, end of March, you're going, uh, April is usually when people are starting to go back. Uh, Cruisers are going back to their home ports. People are putting their boats on the hard. Um, so uh, all cruise ships have been stopped. There have not been any cruise ships. 
Uh, there's still a cruise ship moratorium out of the U.S. Uh, many Europeans fly to Barbados, get on cruise ships there, and then they go north. Don't know if those will be operating at all. Uh, the first cruise ship was supposed to return to Antigua on November 16th. Then I read that that cruise ship, cruise ship line has decided to suspend all activities until um, the end of the year. Uh, so it really has not been uh, tested. Um, as I said, they are very serious. Uh, you must have your uh, face mask on at all time. All people arriving by plane must have a, uh, a COVID test uh, within seven, and it has to have been taken seven days within your arrival at the airport. COVID test is not required at people coming by boat. I think they re realize people sailing down are gonna be at sea longer than seven days. Although if I were sailing down, I would go ahead and get a COVID test before I leave. Uh, it might, because how long you are quarantined once you get there will depend on the officer that's examining you. Uh, you must use EC Clear in advance to let Antigua know you are coming. Part of that will be a health form that you will fill out. Part of that, they will want to know where you have been the last four to six weeks, how much of that time you have been isolated, completely isolated on your boat. Uh, it's not printed anywhere, but I uh, am hearing that if you are indeed told to qu uh, quarantine, the quarantine period is usually 14 days, uh, they will likely use that period that you were on your boat uh, as part of that quarantine period. Uh, the average person from the U.S., uh, what I'm thinking about where I left from is the mouth of Chesapeake Bay. Uh, only once was on a boat fast enough that we made it in seven days. Everything was more between seven and 10 days. Um, once, you ent once you get to Antigua, remember, put that EC clear, send them that EC clear information before you leave. Give yourself enough time to see what their response is. They may have questions. Um, when you arrive, there is only one port of entry for all vessels, commercial and private, ferry and uh, individual, and that is the main port of St. John's. St. John's is not a sailor's port. No one goes there or used to go there. There are no facilities for small boats. Arrive with all the water, all the fuel, all the food you are going to need anticipating that you may have to quarantine. What you will do is once you enter St. John's is you uh, ring the Coast Guard using channel 16. Coast Guard doesn't answer, ask for port authority. If no answer, you are supposed to stay, put yourself at anchor, quarantine flag up, uh, under in the area of the fort of St. James, St. John's, uh, which is to the left as you're entering. Um, it's a commercial port, uh, so you want to be snugged up there. You want to be in whatever breeze you can. It is a very snug port. There is no breeze. If Christmas winds come around Christmas. If you're there before then, it will be very hot, very humid, not very comfortable. Um, when you get the Coast Guard online, they will tell you what to do, uh, where you have to go when you're told to present yourself is there are two cruise ship docks. There's one on the, on the right. That is the ne Nevis Street Pier. That is the one you go to. Uh, pier is not actually what you'll be looking for. There is now a temporary floating aluminum dock um, to the left of the Nevis Pier. Nevis Pier is about 10 feet tall. You have a hard time getting from your boat onto the Nevis Pier, and it may be used for, for ferry traffic. Um, at, the, at that 
floating dock. There will be an officer meeting you there where you will go through the procedures, uh, whether they do it there. Uh, the main Immigration and Customs Office is a few blocks downtown. Uh, you may be asked to go there. Uh, I think this little floating dock could possibly only handle two boats at a time, uh, one on one side, one on the other. It's only about 50 or 60 feet long. Uh, they say be patient uh, and you really have no excuse. Um, if you're asked to quarantine, you'll be put in a quarantine area, which will be there in St. John's. It hasn't been set up yet. Uh, like I say, hopefully you'll be close to the entrance to St. John's because it is going to be very hot. Um, once you have passed, once they assume you are COVID free, you can travel in waters of St. John's. Uh, that's important because when they started all of this, when they first went into lockdown, if you wanted to change from one anchorage in St. John's to another, even if it's only going about a mile, you had to get the Coast Guard to approve that movement. You don't have to do that now. Upon leaving, you will be able to exit um, through the ports most people know of, which are either the uh, port of... Uh, Jolly Harbor or English Harbor, where there are established uh, immigration and custom offices. Um, you may be asked, that is your entire crew may be required to take a COVID test. That test costs 100 US. A lot of the Caribbean islands are like that. We were talking a little bit earlier uh, we will have to see what develops as we get into the high season. That will be November on. Um, but people may be well, who go to the Caribbean at least early, will be staying around an island, one particular island, rather than going island hopping, when you consider you might have to take pay $100 per island per crew member to go to that island for the COVID test. Once at that island, you may have to be you may have to be quarantined for another 14 days, which lets, severely limits your island hopping. Um, as I said, Antigua takes this seriously. Uh, if you are quarantined at home, there are two places to be quarantined. You could be quarantined on the boat. The Antiguan government has arranged for quarantine facilities, which are generally parts of hotels, uh, or you may self-quarantine if you have a place to live on land. They do check up on you on land. I have a friend did a delivery at the beginning of, spring, of, of the summer, taking a boat up to uh, St. Thomas. Uh, when he came back, he was told to quarantine at home. Um, they do check up on you. A Red Cross volunteer does not come to your door. A constable with arrest powers does. If you're not there, they will find you. And then the alternatives are you can go be sent to a government quarantine facility where you may have to pay per night. Uh, you could be arrested. The fine for evalu uh, evading the quarantine is $5,000 and or six months in jail. As we speak, there are three Antiguans in, sitting in jail right now for the crime of not wearing face masks. Um, when their lawyer asked the magistrate at their arraignment if they could post bail, they said no. This is serious stuff. There is only one prison on Antigua. It is the 1735, which is named because that's the year it was built. Um, there have been some improvements over the, I was going to say decades, shall I say centuries. Plumbing is not one of them. There is no flush toilet, no flush toilets in the prisoners area. There are buckets. At sea, that is comical. In the 1735, it is not. But on the brighter end, uh, prison does have a mascot, a female cat called Inmate. And I understand that the rat situation has improved tremendously since Inmate and her respective uh, litters have joined 
join the other inmates. Uh, as I say, they take this seriously. What will happen next? The current quarantine goes until the end of uh, October. I think they will extend the end of the quarantine for another three months with the same provisos because they realize it's going to be tested. They're going to have to see what happens as they're bringing, as the winter visitors come in. Um, all of the big regattas, uh, or at least the Antigua regattas, were, are in April. They were, um, they were canceled last year. Everyone is saying, working on the plan, that they will be up and running again. Um, the government has said that they, are they have now lost 40% of their income over the period of the shutdown. Uh, that is from the end of March to right now. Um, country makes 90% of its income on tourism. Uh, some economists, local economists have said they expect the number of unemployed to triple and the number of and people that are working will be, re, will be working less. Uh, I would be surprised if Antigua gets half the tourist visitors it got, it would get in a regular year. Uh, so far, a lot of those would come by uh, cruise ships. We all heard all the problems with cruise ships and the virus. Don't even know if there will be cruise ships coming to Antigua. Uh, the first one was going to be mid-November. That's been canceled. It's quite likely there will be no cruise ships during the year uh, 2020. Um, things economically are going to be very difficult there. There's a Caribbean phrase and I want to, anyone think of going to the Caribbean, I want you to be acquainted with it. I'll tell you what it means in American English. The phrase is, the credit machine isn't working. Credit card machine isn't working. What that means in English is, we want you to pay cash now. Uh, one of the questions you're always asking yourself is, how much cash shall I take? Whatever you were thinking taking before, take more because credit cards will be accepted less. Many of the bars and restaurants pay their staff by cash. They pay many of their vendors by cash. Uh, they generally pay their staff once a week. In these situations, they may be paying them nightly. So they want their money up front. And I think this is a situation you may find yourself with in any Caribbean island. S situation like this also, uh, oh, to give another example of the difficulty, the government has started to cut back on payments to their old age pensioners. Um, in good times, the government sometimes doesn't pay all the government employees on time. We've had uh, strikes by teachers, we've had strikes by other government employees uh, because of not getting paid. Those were the good times. Um, not to say anything about the Caribbean, I, I'm not, uh, but in situations like this, there's something else we all have to aware, be aware of. There's certainly going to be more petty crime. Uh, there are going to be, a, petty crime is not really that big of an issue. Uh, it's the same as any, any country you go to. There are places not to hang out. There are places to hang out, things not to do, things to do. Uh, there are ATMs. Uh, but I would go to ATMs in groups. In fact, I wouldn't go to an ATM. I'd take my credit cards into the bank and get the money there. Uh, don't flash a lot of cash. Use small bills. Um, it is going to be a very tough time in the Caribbean because all, almost all the Caribbean islands depend heavily on the tourist dollar. I don't think they're going to get, I think they're, if they're lucky, they'll get 20, they'll get half of what they got in a good year. Um, but um, the important thing for sailors is be sure to use that eclair, make sure they know you're coming and that you have answered all the questions they've got. Uh, be prepared for that uh, coronavirus test, $100 per person. Uh, keep in mind, you may be asked to quarantine. Hopefully uh, the time you spend under sail 
between the US and there will be counted as quarantine time. Uh, that's the way it's looking now. Uh, I, I don't think um, they're, they're serious about wanting to make sure they keep hold of the virus. They do. They have a uh, weekly accounting of how many new cases, how many total cases, uh, where those people are, where, who's in quarantine, who is now healthy, uh, who is hospitalized. And so that's the state of Antigua and the British islands in the Caribbean. Joe, thank you so much. That was very, very comprehensive. And I think it's really helped um, a lot of people listening to know what's going on there. We're going to have to check back a lot. Um, I'm going to turn it over now to Jose Mendez. He's going to talk about Puerto Rico. Joe, thank you so much. And we'll have you standing by in case someone needs has any chat okay. questions. Sure. All right. Uh, I'm Jose, owner and general manager of Marina Pescaderia in Puerto Rico. I'm going to do a quick share screen here. And if you could follow me uh, on the presentation. Let me hold on the slide. So play from the beginning. There you go. Once again, I would like to welcome uh, everybody here in this webinar and, and definitely give thanks to Joanne and the SSCA for making this possible. Um, Marina Pescaderia, we are located on the southwest coast of Puerto Rico, overlooking the Mona Channel. Um, and like everybody else, I'm going to make a pause right here, I'm going to go over the current COVID situation. And, and more than anything, we have very good news. As of today, as of 5 p.m., the governor changed, modified the ordinance uh, and definitely impacting in a good way uh, cruising navigation, recreational navigation and anchorage in Puerto Rico. So I'm gonna go uh, over that, over the new ordinance which just came out uh, from the government uh, uh, like I said, two hours ago. Anyway, uh, we are a small 99 slip marina, blue flag certified, overlooking the Mona Channel. Nice community of local vessels, liverboards, and transient vessels, which have, we have been working uh, closely with on the last several years to make sure that, that we offer everything that, that they need on their way to and fro. Bahamas, Turks, Caicos, mainland to the rest of the Caribbean. Uh, quick location of where we are. Yellow dots mark the typical cruising, cruiser routes from Bahamas, Turks into the rest of the Caribbean. We are right here on the blue dot, overlooking Mona Island. Um, hold on one second, let me get this reorganized quick. Um, we have been, it took us a couple of years, but the CBP Customs and Border uh, Protection Agency here in Puerto Rico did give us uh, the port of entry certification. So you don't need to, as before, stop in Mayagüez or Aguadilla, all cruisers, both U.S. citizens and non-U.S. citizens can come straight to the marina in order to uh, do all the clearance with customs. Uh, they did install customs and border people a uh, big iPad here with the roadmap. It's an application that you can also download it yourself into your smartphone. Or if you don't have any access to a smartphone, you can just come straight uh, to the marina, come to the office and fill out all the requirements uh, to entry our island. Um, if you are a US citizen, it's only like a 15 minute process uh, to be legally in Puerto Rico. If you are a non-US citizen, you can still come to the marina, fill out the whole form work on the application. And from there, we'll, uh, they'll do a video conference and most often than not, they will come here to the marina to stamp passports and, and do the whole non-US citizen requirements. There might be sometimes uh, that you will need to go for whatever reason to their main office, but we do have taxis, rental cars, or courtesy transportation that we can help you 
get there. Uh, we can accept vessels up to 115 foot and seven and a half foot draft. We got all facilities, fuel station, free pump out station, all sorts of mechanics and technicians, both diesel, upper engine, electronics, electricians. <laughs> Uh, restaurant, mini markets at the marina, hot water showers, which always come in handy. Uh, free regular Wi Fi and high speed internet for those our clients that need more data and more mechs on their speed. Uh, in Puerto Real, where we're located right now, you can see the video. It is a small fisherman's village, has been for many, many years. Uh, there's a whole bunch of fisheries around the area, plus bakeries, restaurants, break open pizza when you need a break from eating mahis and tunas while cruising. Uh, small supermarkets, either walking distance, or we have a golf cart that you can, or clients can borrow to go quickly to the supermarket, get quick provisions. Uh, besides that, being an American territory, we have the usual Sam's Club, Walmart, Sears, shopping centers, which makes it a great place to refurbish provisioning uh, for the rest of your trip. Do have rental cars and taxis at the marina to do your errands and get to know the West Coast and washers and dryers for our clients. Um, besides the typical uh, work get your work done at the marina. We also pride ourselves on, on working with our clients more, more than anything on our cruising clients uh, to help them on their personal uh, things they need to get resolved. We have been doing doctors and dentist appointments for visitors, veterinaries for the pet friends on the sailboats, no republics, airports, well, anything so we can try to help our cruisers as much as we can on their stay here on our island. Um, besides typical uh, concert service, it is in Cabo Rojo, where we're located on the south coast, uh, southwest coast, sorry. Uh, it's very uh, hot spot for local tourism when people in Puerto Rico think of a weekend getaway or a weekly getaway in Puerto Rico. They always think of Cabo Rojo as one of the top destinations. A couple of very nice places around the area. You can see it here. You can definitely do your research or give us a call. But uh, you'll get to know the area. Lighthouse, very nice beaches, salt flats, all of the stuff. Besides, on the, besides Cabo Rojo, on the west coast, there are famous surfing beaches. Actually, we got a couple of cruiser clients that come or have been going for the last couple of years between January and March, uh, just to visit uh, the surfing beaches on, on the high season. Um, coffee plantations up in the mountains, about half an hour to an hour from the marina. Bocaron, which is another one of the hotspots for cruisers here on the West Coast with lively bars and restaurants. Although I'll go now, uh, after a while on the current restrictions and how everything is going about. Um, Marina Pescaria is also a great place uh, to start up your cruising trip along the south coast of Puerto Rico. Uh, it used to be when we opened up back in 2011 that a lot of people probably stop at Puerto Rico for quick provisioning and going uh, on their way to the rest of the Caribbeans. We have been trying, and I think we've been pretty successful, of letting everybody know about all the amenities, Anchorage, and, and very nice places that are located along our south coast, uh, including first one, La Barguera, which is about a nice five, six hour cruise from our marina, very nice. Anchorage area with mangrove lagoons, uh, bioluminescent bay, which we have three of them all along the island. And this one, the one in La Parguera, is the first one you'll see uh, after leaving us on the Cabo Rojo. Uh, there's also Gilligan's Island, which has been pretty famous the last couple of years for cruiser to anchor. 
and Caja de Muertos Island or Desmond Chess Coffin Island, which is a beautiful place to spend the day and for a day anchorage is out of the south coast of Ponce, right along the way on the south coast. Um, and then- Jose? Sure. We have a question. Um, sure. Do you have quarantine? The new two rules, or two hours ago you had some new rules. Is there a quarantine or what is the procedure there? Yep, I will be going on that in okay. two slides. Good. And okay. we'll go over, because I know that's the, the most important why everybody's here and they want to know what's the latest. Um, after the South Coast, we definitely have the crowns, Jewel of the Crown, which is our Spanish Virgin Islands, Vieques, Culebrita, and Culebra, which has always been hotspots for cruiser friends traveling through Puerto Rico. Uh, nice thing about Puerto Rico and what I always tell everybody is we not only have the beaches and the anchorage, but we got also a whole lot of history, uh, centuries old buildings in old San Juan Ponce, rainforest. It really makes for a very nice trip while cruising along Puerto Rico uh, and before you leave us for the rest of the Caribbean. Anyway, now going into COVID, uh, like I said, we had very good news uh, for cruising community. Uh, 4 p.m. today, local government uh, gave out new ordinances that will be in place starting this Saturday. Um, first and foremost, marinas, beaches, and anchorage are open throughout the whole island with restrictions. And I'm gonna go over those restrictions right now on the next slide. Um, recreational navigation, which has been prohibited since March 12th, when we started our lockdown up until today's announcement, will be back open coming this Saturday. Actually, it, it was 4 p.m. that the announcement started and from four to five, the phone was ringing like crazy because it seems like everybody, local people, want to go back into the water to navigate, anchor, go to their favorite anchorage. But so it's definitely good news. Now, it, as in pretty much everywhere else in the world, it can be done. You can navigate, you can cruise, but there's a lot of restrictions just to make sure that we're keeping everybody in good health. Um, to come into Puerto Rico, it's still, and it has always been a standard custom clearance. It used to be throughout the, the, the lockdown that there were only three marinas open basically for emergency services, repairs, fuel, medical emergencies. Uh, those were us on the West Coast, Puerto Rey Marina on the East Coast, and the Club Nautico de San Juan, San Juan Yaclo on the North Coast. With this new uh, ordinances, all marinas are back uh, open. You can definitely visit every marina, just as long as you follow the protocols, which I said I'm gonna go now over them. But coming from outside Puerto Rico jurisdiction, from the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, Dominican Republic, it's a standard custom clearance with CBP, which like I said before, you can come straight to the marina and do it right from here from the marina. Um, protocols for cruisers and recreational vessels. No rafting and anchorage, which cruisers not necessarily do that, but local vessels, they do their 20, 30 boats long rafting on, on the famous, the, the more important anchorage on the island. That's not gonna be permitted. They're talking about a 15 foot distance between vessels and just to be on the safe side, if, in the safe side, if I were you, I would go even further than that. Um, like pretty much uh, everywhere else, it's they're requiring six foot distancing at all time, including beaches, uh, wear your face mask at all times. Um, no socializing, staying with your family nucleus, there's still no large gatherings. There was a, 
this Saturday, a, a, a big gathering and police when they're and they're now working with that. They're definitely doing uh, very strict checkups, making sure that everybody's on their group. And same thing happens on, on restaurants. There are bars by itself are not open. Restaurant with bars are open, but the bar service is closed. It's only seating uh, service and tables just to make sure that they have proper distancing among them. Uh, there's temperature checks pretty much all over the place, anywhere you go, supermarkets, banks, pharmacies, they're gonna be checking your temperature and following you with an alcohol bottle, spraying <laughs> you all over. Um, restaurants, according to the new ordinance, are gonna be open seven days a week. It used to be at only 25% capacity. They're now allowing 50% capacity. Uh, like I said, table service only on the restaurants. And this pretty much, uh, not only for cruisers and during Anchorage or on the beach or at the marina, but pretty much everywhere all over the island, all services, small stores, hardware stores, they all follow the same procedure. Uh, they may have lines to get into the stores with proper distancing while doing the line. Um, there are other places that Mostly restaurants will require a reservation and we can help you with that. Um, but just following basic rules, you should be able to do all right while staying on at the marina and in Puerto Rico. Um, regarding that you asked, Joan, uh, in terms of quarantines and, and testing and everything, uh, it's still uh, on the on the ordinance uh, that went in today, I'm betting that by tomorrow, they will have a whole write-up summarizing everything. I do wanna go over how it was before, because worst case scenario, it'll be just like it was before for visitors, either cruisers or coming through the airport. Um, may change, I will learn that tomorrow and I will ask everybody to uh, follow our page or any of the cruising uh, guides uh, all over the internet, Facebook, Instagram, and the likes. Uh, in order to be up to date on the testing and actual requirements coming into Puerto Rico. But like I said, I'm gonna go over what used to be until today, because like I said, worst case scenario should remain the same. If you're coming in from outside Puerto Rico jurisdiction, uh, they're gonna ask you for a two week quarantine. If you're a cruiser coming into the marina, that doesn't mean that you need to stay locked in your vessel, but it does mean that you can't leave the marina unless you have a 72 hour, oh, sorry about that, let me go back, a 72 hour uh, maximum negative molecular test result, meaning you need to have a negative test result from the last three days. Had a couple of cruiser clients that came in and they did their testing right before leaving the St. Thomas. So when they got here, it already came on the email. They gave me proof. I put it on their file and, and they were good to, to go out of the marina, obviously following uh, local protocols of distancing and, and mask. Uh, there's also, if you don't have the testing done on um, 72 hours, because there's some places that are definitely taking more than 72 hours to do the molecular testing, you can get tested upon arrival. And we can definitely help you with that. We have a couple of laboratories that have been working with us to, to okay. help our clients get tested right away, right as soon as they arrive. Um, there has been periods of shortage uh, with reactives needed for the testing. Uh, our friendly labs have been kind enough to always have some for us to get our clients tested. Uh, if you're coming in and want to get tested, uh, do let us know in advance, either by calling me, phone numbers down here, or emailing me so I can coordinate with the laboratory in advance to make sure that they have enough for our clients coming in. Um, then again, like I said, this may all change when the actual document sign ordinance comes out tomorrow and the Department of Natural Resources does the same 
uh, specifically for marinas and, and, and Anchorage. Um, I'll definitely make sure to post it on my page and we always send it to SSCA and OCC and all the other cruising groups so they're up to date on, on what's really because like everywhere else it's been changing constantly uh, as, 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 as it did today. Uh, so yeah, we'll be posting pretty much all over the internet so everybody's up to date. But like I said, if it stays as it has been for the last six months, uh, it, you either need to bring in your negative test results or we'll give you a hand trying to get you tested right away. After that, you should be good to go just as long as you follow proper rules of the protocol so you don't get into any trouble. Um, side side, before I finish, I would like to thank a couple of people that helped me with this presentation. First and foremost, Islandbound and our friend Diana Manueli, who has been helping us dealing with cruisers. And actually, she just posted also on Facebook and Instagram that at probably by tomorrow, as soon as the actual ordinance comes out, she also will be posting it and handing it out to all cruising groups and associations so everybody will be up to date. And all the videos and photos that were done by XT and Scan and Life Photography and Pedro Pereira, which are both clients to the marina. And like I said, uh, after this presentation, if you do have any questions, we always try to keep up to date to help our cruisers uh, comply with all requirements. It's my phone number in there and my email, or just to go over Marina Pescaderia on the web and you'll get to us. And that's my presentation for today. Jose, do you know the cost of the COVID test there? Yep, the molecular test, it's $90 right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I had a question there. They want to know, well, how many people are sick or ICU beds or things like that? That's something I'm not sure that we're qualified to talk at. Um, so I'm I don't have specific numbers. I mean, we do have cases and, and and even with the lockdowns and all the protocols that have been in place since March, which has been really harsh, um, I know, do know for a fact that there are ventilators, uh, ICU beds available, and there has been, even on our, on our worst periods, uh, there has always been, and I've been in contact with, with medical doctors and, and following the news. And, and that's one thing that even throughout the, the, the pandemic, we have had the, the necessary uh, medical equipment and hospital attention to take care of, of people getting sick for coronavirus. Well, thank you very much, Jose. And uh, we're going to do a uh, chat or questions at the end of after sure. Russ's presentation. But I'm going to turn it over to Russ now. And he's going to talk about Panama, who is also um, doing some wonderful stuff for us. And Russ, you're, you're um, unmute yourself there. I'm unmuted. Well, let's start with uh, Panama, the COVID situation. We're roughly, uh, we got a screen share up still here. Let me, uh, Let me get it down here. Yep, I'll get it down real quick. Um, there you go. Panama's had a tough time with COVID in the sense that we are obviously a place that a lot of people come and go from. And when it's if the first efforts to get it under control were not terribly effective. Today, the curve is flat and in general, Panamanians are learning to live with the rules. Now, that doesn't mean it's perfect, but it's getting better. Uh, the death rate is going down. The hospitalization rate is going down. There are plenty of ICU beds available. There's, last check, I had 142 people in ICU, and there are 600 plus ICU beds in Panama. So uh, that situation 
is pretty good. COVID testing in Panama is not required in, in any of the circumstances that cruises are affected by, except returning to Panama. If your boat's in Panama and you want to go back, you're going to need a COVID test to get on the airplane. So let's start with the fact that the Panama Canal remained open throughout the entire time frame. And because the Panama Canal is open, ports are all open. Cruisers have had some challenges. Uh, the challenges are that the, it's a big country relative to the size of Antigua anyway. And there's different rules in different ports simply because the authorities don't always coordinate everything very well. Uh, right now, uh, you can get, uh, you can come in and go to anchor. <coughs> you go to anchor for 14 days. You need help in this process because the, the authorities don't come out to the boat. We report you as being at, at anchor. We, set you, we put you into the system. Shelter Bay does, um, uh, Linton Bay does, and um, uh, an agent in Panama City will. Any of the yacht agents can do it for you. You stay aboard the boat for 14 days, and after you've been aboard the boat for 14 days, we go and say, okay, the boat's been at uh, anchor for 14 days. It's in Panama you're allowed to come in. Now you're not coming in as a tourist. I think it's the most important thing to keep in mind here is you're not going to be able to do anything other than be in the marina. You can go shopping, but it's, that's a controlled situation. Uh, shopping in Panama has been controlled on the basis of gender and hours and for some time. And in, in most cases, we just, we help you with the shopping. Um, we do, we've had 150 boats roughly come into Shelter Bay during this crisis. And I'm gonna play a little video for you here. Um, basically, if I can figure out how to do this, yep, okay. I think it'll start playing now. Are we, are we up? Yeah. Um, Another turning point, a fork the stuck in the road. road. Time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time. It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you had the time of your life. So take the photographs and still friends in your mind. Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time. Tattoos and memories and asking on trial. Thank you, Rod. Sorry, I can't, I can't get it to go down. And that's right. I hope you had the time of your life. Okay, I think I got it to go down now. Uh, I'll s stop this share because it's basically, the message is you wear a mask all the time. Um, you're... Where's the share stopping? Uh, here we go. Okay, let's just stop that. Stop share. There we go. Uh, you wear a mask all the time. Uh, we've got hand washing, alcohol on temperature, pretty much the same routine that's going on all over the world. Six foot social distancing, all of this stuff is in place. Now, what's happening? Yesterday, or pardon me, Monday, the 7th, recreational boating opened in Panama. They are 
no, the beaches were not open. You couldn't, you could go out in your boat, you could go fishing and you could, but you couldn't go to the beach. This is the first step in a gradual reopening. Uh, restaurants are coming soon. Right now, however, uh, most businesses are open at some level. Uh, you've always been able to go to grocery stores and hardware stores. Uh, liquor was prohibited for three months, but that's now available for sale again. And in general, people are, are getting used to the idea that they're gonna have to be more careful. There's controls on people moving around the country. So you do have, once you're in a marina, you're pretty much there. Um, you can go through the canal. That's, uh, there's, the, the canal's been putting boats through with a special set of circumstances that changes. Uh, so I'm not gonna go into the details because by the time you get here, it's unlikely to be the same as it is right now. But you can also leave the country, uh, get a sarpe and go um, north, south, east, west. But uh, you can't go to the San Blas, for instance, that's closed and will remain closed for a while, I think. Now, October 12th is the official opening of the airport. If the airport opens, so will tourism. Do not have any word on what rules they're going to apply for tourists. I, I doubt that they will have the same rules that they have currently. If you come back to the country, you have to have a COVID test 72 hours before you get on the airplane or within 72 hours, you have to present the test, then you can get on the plane, you get off and you go into quarantine. Uh, most of it is self quarantine. They do check up on you. There are fines. It's not as aggressive as Antigua, uh, but you are limited. If things go as they're currently programmed, 12 October, we should see all airlines start to fly into Panama again. Currently, it's only United, um, Avianca, Spirit, and a couple of others in Copa that are flying, but you can fly in and out of Panama you, and the airport is open now for, for transit passengers, trans, for trans, um, transients. So they've been working on this for a while. Their procedures are getting better. And I'm very optimistic that Panama will be servicing yachts sometime in October as they did in the past. Anchorages should open up, uh, the beaches rather, uh, and the, the ability to, to visit between marinas, which exists today, but is, it's the procedure that's awfully difficult and uh, it doesn't really work. So we, we, we would suggest that you didn't plan on it. Um, you can, however, uh, do it if you, if you have to, you just sail to, to, to Shelter Bay and then you go through the canal and you can go to another marina at the other end. None of it's automatic, it all requires a, help from an agent in a significant amount of time. The Panamanian government has been aggressive about controlling COVID and as I said, the hospital situation is good. The general health of the public is good People are not getting sick in the supermarkets and supplies are pretty plentiful across the board. Uh, we're here and expect to be providing services without any serious problems. And particularly one of the better services that's available is that um, Amazon Prime is working just fine. <laughs> Uh, everything comes in through the airport and uh, people are getting everything they need. Uh, so as far as supplies and replenishment, health, uh, so far no problems with uh, currency or uh, inflation. Credit cards still work. 
uh, in general, it's pretty good given the situation that exists in other places. Uh, I have expectations that things will get better soon. That's about it, and was uh, I can show you more Sh Shelter Bay stuff, but <laughs> I wasn't planning on doing an ad for Shelter Bay. I was really here saying Panama is here and we're still open for business. We'll continue to be open for business, uh, but we're not promoting tourism today. In a month, I expect we'll, we'll be in the tourism business again. Russ, what is the charge for COVID tests in Panama? Uh, I think it's 20, I've heard 25 bucks. Uh, I think you can, if you go to the right place, you'd probably get it for nothing. Uh, the, you, you don't need a COVID test uh, for any particular event that I'm aware of, except coming back to Panama. Now we have a question. Can you go through the canal without an agent? Uh, yes, we, we, you can go through the canal without an agent, but you have to come to us. <laughs> Ah, I see. So you have to. In, in other words, company. you can't go. You can't really get through the canal without help right now. We'll help you get through. Oh, that's good to know. That yeah. was Neil Bloom. Yeah, the canal has never required you to have an agent. It's always been possible to go and and pay your toll and and arrange it. The problem now is that you have to have a group of boats, and the the process it is, uh, they have to get the boats together. You got to have a crew that's going to be on the boat. It's a little bit more complicated. And there's only one, uh, uh, you know, the, the, they're trying to limit the advisors. So, but it can happen. Boeing, both directions, going north, it probably takes a while to get the three boats together. Going south, we, as we said, we put maybe 60, 70 boats through the canal. Okay. Juanjo just came up and said $25 for blood test. 99 to 120 for P PCR. So there's different tests. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard, uh, I've heard higher prices and lower prices, but it's, they're fairly, if you go to one lab, you're supposed to get it for free. So, you know, do you get it for free? <laughs> I don't know. A uh, quick question. If people come to Panama, time on passage, does that count for the two weeks or? No, nothing at this point. We haven't been able to convince the government that that counts. We've tried. So Antigua, so Antigua may count for quarantine. Um, Jose, uh, for Puerto Rico, time on passage, does that count or that two weeks when you get there, it starts? Do we still have Jose there? Oh, Jose asked, I'll mute it real quick. There you go. Uh, no, the way we have been working it along with the government is a two week quarantine as soon as they arrive. So passage time won't count. Uh, but then again, like I said, the, the, we have been clients that come in with their negative tests or we have helped them uh, get tested as soon as they get in. Then again, some people, most of the people that have stopped on the last couple of weeks, maybe, uh, they have come in for repairs uh, on their on their sailing electronics refrigeration, and we have been able to do everything right here in the marina, including getting parts and everything. Um, and so, most of our clients during the harsher time or more restrictive times of the pandemic, they have been able to get everything resolved, even provisioning without having to actually exit the marina. So we've been very proactive to help the cruising community uh, so they can be on their way safely with, with, with the uh, corrected SO engine, electronics, everything working all right, without having to, to expose themselves outside or, or, or just pretty much resolving everything here from the marina. <laughs> Okay, thank you. And um, one Augustine. other oh, thing, Joan, before I forget, uh, we're, we will be having a regatta in February in Bocas del Toro. So uh, the, the outlook <laughs> is that things should work out well. Uh, Bocas is going to host, uh, Bocas uh, Marina is going to host the regatta. But uh, 
I think people are optimistic here that it's that it will get better. Excellent. And August, Augustine, uh, we have a question on the um, Azores. I know Americans can go to the Azores. Um, I think they're pretty strict about quarantine. I don't have all the details most recently from Duncan Sweet. Do you have any details on the Azores at all? Yes. Uh, Azores, about maybe a few weeks ago, they started with the COVID test program. So when you arrive, for example, to Orta in uh, Payal, you have to send an email or just call the, the harbor, the marina. Marina will, will give you, you have to anchor. They will give you a date for having the COVID test. COVID test is free. When they tell you you come with a dinghy to the marina, to the, to the harbor, they do the test. You have to go back again to your boat. And by the time they have the results, if it's negative, you have a permission of seven days to be in the Azores. And if you want to be more than seven days, you have to do another test again, and then there won't be any problem. That's the latest I know from Azores and also from Funchal, from Madeira. Thank you very much, Augustine. I think that we probably need to bring in Duncan for a, a talk um, on the Azores. But um, I appreciate it. Do we have any more questions? I'm looking at the chat. I think we've covered most of the items on the chat. Um, we will save all of these chats. Um, and um, let me flip on here. Um, we're going to have um, an event. Let's see. September 30th will be U.S. to Caribbean, which will have more inf information and details. Um, we'll do something October 15th going south for snowbirds. November 12th will be uh, Florida and Bahamas. Tonight at 2 o'clock in the morning, I am doing a Pacific Island or the Pacific uh, Conference with uh, probably the six top people who are trying to figure out where boats are able to go north to south, which they really can't do um, in, in the problem. There's a horrible, horrible situation in the Pacific right now. And we have um, uh, Luke uh, Chabot is in uh, Malaysia. He just got there. He's in quarantine and, and others. Um, all the way from Malaysia to Hawaii, south to New Zealand, we'll, we'll be talking and saving that. And that can be found online in the um, um, uh, at ssca.org. We'll, we'll post that complimentary. And I just got from Andrew Armstrong. To, thank you very much. Very informative. It, you know, it's a little bit grim uh, for us sometimes because this has not been fun. Noon site is our, the place we're posting everything to. I know Jose has been wonderful. Uh, Captain Joe has been wonderful for noon site. Jesse James has been posting to noon site. I'll let Jesse say hi. If you ask Unmute yourself, Jesse. You can say hi all the way from Trinidad. Hi, June. Can you hear me? And no changes there in Trinidad yet. You're still locked down. Nobody can come in, right? Right. Yes. Hello, everybody. Good to be here. Thanks again, June. Yeah. So basically, everything is about the same uh, as of my last talk. I did have some communication with the Minister of National Security and the Office of the Chief Medical Officer. So. Um, but we, it's still a work in progress um, as of now. Mm. Ajuna, you hear me? Yes. I'm, right. I've got a problem with my computer, so I'm not right. I, and I don't need more slides. So anyway, I just want to thank you all. It's been very informative. Um, it is not easy to do these kind of seminars or discussions because you're coming from all over the world and with different computers, but I really appreciate it. I know that the participants appreciate it. Um, if you go to the website, uh, our SSCA website, um, you, that front page is a splash page and we're posting everything you can get to to free. If you want to get your 
links, you go to the SSU orange box, click on that, and you'll be able to find the replays of Jesse and Trinidad. You'll get the Pacific one, you'll get this one. So we're really hoping that to keep the information going and at least give peak cruisers an option. Um, I think September 30th will be really good because that will be Hank Schmidt talking about going to the Caribbean, the French islands. Uh, I think he may be, may be talking Antigua, but I know he's going to talk Bermuda. So that's September 30th. Again, that is complimentary free. Um, SSA, SSCA is just trying to help. I can't thank you all enough. Augustine staying up late for us. Jesse coming in from Trinidad several times. Jose sharing with us from Puerto Rico. Captain Joe Kapinski sharing a beautiful flag and a halo around your head. <laughs> That's, I love that. <laughs> and a virtual tot, because if you go to Trinidad, uh, go to Antigua, you look up Joe, and he will get you into the tot club. And he'll tell you what it is, but not today. But it's really um, been wonderful. We are going to be signing off. Does anyone have any questions from our panelists? Any discussion thoughts? Russ, Augustine, Jesse, Joe? Great work, Joan. I think that you're doing a service to the cruisers that's really important. And uh, anything you can, anything we can do to help you, just holler. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll think of you at two o'clock this morning. <laughs> and I'll be away. <laughs> yes. So just a second, what Russ said. Thank you very much, Joan. This is for me, listening to these four other uh, team players, it has been very informative. And, you know, I, it's because it's really appreciated. And I appreciate it also, knowing what's going on outside there from the Lions, more so to say. So thank you guys. It's been a very, like very informative. To, I would like to say, you know, my address, it's on the uh, station, uh, station host panelists. So any information you would like to have from the Canaries or from the mainland, please do not hesitate to get in touch with me with my email. Very good. You're in, all in the directory. The SSCA directories has your phone number and contact and everything. We've been working really hard to make sure that that's all that information is available to everyone. Thank you so much. We will sign off now and we appreciate it. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.